Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. A biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The Ladino, also known as Mestizos. Some interesting history about the Latino Israelites. Shalom. Shalom means peace. James, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. The words mestizo and ladino. These are words used to describe Israelites in North, Central, and South America, and the Caribbean. This painting is called The Linen Market, St. Domingo, also known today as the Dominican Republic in Haiti. Source, engraved print of painting by Agostino Brunis, published by John P. Thompson, London, October 6, 1804. This print is held by the Barbados Museum. Slavery Images, a visual record of the African slave trade and slave life in the early African diaspora. It should have read Israelite diaspora, but that's what this video is about anyway. Market, Saint Dominique, Saint Dominique, or the Dominican Republic, Haiti, 1770s. Description, titled, The Linen Market at Saint Domingo shows free colored women and men and slaves in background. Some of the background features and human subjects in this scene are also found in the Bernays oil painting, Linen Market, Dominica, held by the Yale Center for British Art. See image reference, Bernays Yale. Augustino Brunes, sometimes incorrectly spelled Brunias, Bruneas, a painter born in Italy in 1730, came to England in 1758, where he became acquainted with William Young. Young had been appointed to a high governmental post in West Indian territories, acquired by Britain from France. And in late 1764, Bruneas accompanied Young to the Caribbean his personal artist. Arriving in early 1765, Bernays stayed in the islands until around 1775, when he returned to England, exhibiting some of his paintings in the late 1770s, and visited the continent of Europe. He returned to the West Indies in 1784 and remained there until his death on the island of Dominica in 1796. Although Bernays primarily resided in Dominica. He also spent time in St. Vincent and visited other islands, including Barbados, Grenada, St. Crits, and Tobago. And these islands, like St. Crits, these were places where Creoles or free people of color, black Ladinos or black Jews still knew and remembered that they were black Jews because Christopher Columbus made a deal with the king of Spain to make Jamaica a haven for Jews. So these black Jews were protected under the laws and treaties granted to Christopher Columbus by the king of Spain to protect Jews. First, blacks in the Americas. 
The African, it should read the Israelite presence in the Dominican Republic. Why the Dominican Republic? This is where the first colonization of the Americas by the Spanish started. Ladinos and Bazeles, Ladino. The term referred in general to the blacks who were familiar in general with the religion, Catholicism, cultures, and languages of Castile, Spain, or Portugal, either because having been born in Portugal or Spain and raised in those territories or countries, or due to the long contact with or exposure to these cultures of Spain and Portugal. The Ladinos are the Jews or the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, living in Spain and Portugal. Black Ladino, Black Ladinos, Negros Ladinos, were Hispanicized Black Ladinos, exiled to Spanish America after having spent time in Spain. They were referred to as Negros Ladinos, cultivated or Latinized blacks, as opposed to Negros Bozeles, uneducated in the ways of Spain or Portugal or European culture, blacks, also known as those captured in Africa. The Ladinos, Europeanized or Latinized blacks, skills granted them a higher price in the slave markets than those of Bozeles. Black Ladinos born in the Americas were also known as Negros Criolos or Creole Blacks or Creoles of Color. Also, Free People of Color, Atlantic Creoles, Latinized Blacks. For further identity of the Ladinos, we can refer to this book for source material. Atlantic Africa and the Spanish Caribbean, the years 1570 to 1640, by author David Wheat. Page 229. Substained exposure to Portuguese culture transformed some coastal West African communities, producing multilingual and knowledgeable individuals, such as those identified by the author Ira Berlin as Atlantic Creoles, who would have been known in African literature as Luso Africans, and as in context as Ladinos and Christos, new Christians because they were Jews who were converted and became Catholics, Christos, Christians, new Christians, or simply Portuguese, and also as black Portuguese. So Ladinos were also known as Atlantic Creoles. For more information on the Atlantic Creole, let's go to Wikipedia article, Atlantic Creole. Atlantic Creole is a term used in North America to describe a cultural group of Americans, black Americans, who have ancestral roots in Africa and Europe, Spain, Portugal, Netherlands, England, and sometimes the Caribbean. These people are culturally Americans and are the descendants of enslaved peoples and indentured workers. The first black Americans or African Americans came over as indentured servants. There were no laws for slavery based on color just yet at this time. These people are culturally American and are all the descendants of enslaved peoples and indentured workers during the European colonization of the Americas before the year 1660. Some have lived 
and worked in Europe. Places as Spain, Portugal, or the Caribbean, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, before coming or being transported to North America, even places such as Mexico. Examples of such men included John Punch and Emmanuel Druggis. This or his surname was possibly derived from Rodriguez because these were Spanish speaking, Portuguese speaking people. So let's go into the history of John Punch, a Atlantic Creole man. Before we go into the history of John Punch, let's go more into the history of the Ladinos and the Atlantic Creoles, the black Jews of Spain and Portugal. Let's go back to the Wikipedia article so we can get some context, some historical context on what was really happening in the early Americas. According to the author Ira Berlin, some of these mixed race Atlantic Creoles were culturally what today is called Latinos. They were from Spain and Portugal. So they would be culturally considered Latinos today in the United States as they were descended from Portuguese, black Latinos, Portuguese and Spanish fathers, primarily in the trading posts of West Africa. They have surnames such as the early so-called black Americans, African Americans had surnames or last names such as Chavez, Rodriguez, and Francisco. In the Chesapeake Bay Colony, many of the Atlantic Creoles intermarried with their European neighbors, mainly Irish, adopted European surnames or last names, became property owners and farmers, and owned slaves in turn. The families became well established with numerous free descendants by the time of the American Revolution. They were culturally Latinos. They changed their last names from Spanish and Portuguese names to English names. They were also known as Latinized Blacks, Atlantic Creole, Ladino, Non-Iberian, for example, Jews, slaves who speak Spanish. The first African Americans, the first black Americans. So now let's go into the history of John Punch, the slave, the Atlantic Creole, the Ladino. From Wikipedia, John Punch. He was in the Americas around the time of 1630, living in 1640 was an enslaved African. But we already know he was an Atlantic Creole, a Ladino, somebody from Spain or Portugal, who lived in the colony of Virginia, thought to have been an indentured servant. Punch attempted to escape to Maryland and was sentenced in July 1640 by the Virginia Governor's Council to serve as a slave for the remainder of his life. Two European men who ran away with him, they were also indentured servants. Two European men who ran away with him received a lighter sentence of extended indentured servitude. For this reason, some historians consider John Punch the first official slave in the English colonies. In his case, as the first legal sanctioning of lifelong slavery in the Chesapeake Bay Area. Some historians also considered this to be one of the first legal distinctions between Europeans and Africans, so-called African Americans, Black Americans, made in the colony and a key milestone in the development of the institution of slavery in the United States. In July 2012, Ancestry.com published a paper suggesting that John Punch 
was a 12th generation grandfather of President Barack Obama on his mother's side. Punch's descendants were known by the bunch, a bunch of surname. Punch is also believed to be one of the paternal ancestors of the 20th century American diplomat, Ralph Bunch. The first African American to win the Nobel Peace Prize. John Punch, the slave, the Ladino, the Atlantic Creole. His descendants were President Barack Obama and Ralph Bunch. You can look up this article yourself from the Daily Mail. Revealed Obama's, President Obama's white mother was descended from America's first black slave. Ancestry.com carried out a two-year project into President Obama's mother's heritage. Property and marriage records suggested his mother was descended from John Punch, the Ladino, the Atlantic Creole, the black Ladinos from Spain and Portugal. John Punch, who was condemned to life of slavery in 1640, he had children, John Punch, with a white woman who passed on her free status to them, to their children, and changed their name to Bunch. DNA taken from today's white Bunch family suggests Cameroonian roots or West African roots. This makes Obama 11th great-grandchild of Punch. President Obama is descended on his mother's side from America's first black slave on his white mother's side. She should be considered a woman of color because she's descended from John Punch. President Obama is descended from America's first black slave on his white mother's side. Genealogists have claimed. Ralph Bunch, who was a descendant of John Punch. Ralph Johnson Bunch, born August 7th, 1904, and died December 9th, 1971, was an American political scientist, diplomat, and leading actor in the mid-20th century, the colonization process, and the U.S. Civil Rights Movement, who received in the 1950 a Nobel Peace Prize for his late 1940s mediation in Israel. Among black Nobel laureates, he's the first African American and the first person of African descent to be awarded a Nobel Prize. He was involved in the formation and early administration of the United Nations and played a major role in both the decolonization process and numerous UN peacekeeping operations a descendant of Atlantic Creoles, of Ladinos, Ralph Bunch. Ralph Bunch. And here, to your right, is a painting of Ladinos. And Ralph Bunch was a black American descendant of Atlantic Creoles, Ladinos, who wore culturally considered Latinos in North America. And many African Americans or Black Americans are descended or descendants of Latinos and Atlantic Creoles or Black, Spanish, and Portuguese. For instance, Lena Horn, Lena Mary Calhoun Horn, born July 30th, 1917, and died May the 9th, 2010, was an American dancer, 
actress, singer, and civil rights activist. Horn's career spanned more than 70 years, appearing in film, television, and theater. Her mother's father was a Portuguese Negro, a Ladino. So let's go into the book. Who is Black? One Nation's Definition by the author F. James Davis to look into Lena Horne's family tree. On page number three, we read, Her mother's father was a Portuguese Negro, and two women in his family had passed as white and became entertainers. Lena Horn, her mother's father was a Portuguese Negro, a Ladino. And this history about the Ladinos and the Atlantic Creoles, this is the history of the black elite and middle class among the black Americans. The black elite is any elite, either political or economic in nature, that is made up of people who identified as of black African descent. The black elite and middle class was started by Ladino families who were culturally Latinos. The history of the black elite in the United States. You can also read articles, the talented 10th and African-American upper class. In the North of the United States, many educated black people taken advantage of their relative freedom took part in the abolitionist and suffrage activities. They also provided support to stations of the Underground Railroad prior to the abolition of slavery. Later, we're gonna find out that many of the abolitionist families were actually people who were passing for white and they were people of color. Later, during the Reconstruction era, a number of them took part in various professions and grew quite wealthy in places, including Brooklyn, New York. In the South, an elite started forming before the American Civil War among free black people who managed to acquire property. Of the free people of color in North Carolina, in the census from 1790 to 1810, 80% of the free people of color can be traced to African-Americans free in Virginia during the colonial period or around 1776 and before. Most were descended from unions between free white women, mostly Irish, and enslaved or free Africans or African-Americans or Ladinos and Atlantic Creoles. So most of these unions were between so-called men of color and white women, usually Irish. And here we have an image of Barzillai Lou, born November 5th, 1743, and died January 18th. 1822, was an African-American soldier who served with distinction during the American Revolutionary War. Barzillai Lu was born free in 1743. So this leads us to an article about the free people of color in the context of the history of slavery in the Americas, free people of color, French, gens de color libris, or Spanish, gentil de color libre, was primarily people of mixed African, European, and native 
American descent who were not enslaved. So now we have the Africans or so-called Bozeles or Jews of West Africa with the European or Ladinos, Jews from Spain and Portugal. And now we have the Native American or the tribes of Israel that was already located in the Americas. These people was African, European, and Native American descent who were not enslaved. They were a mixture of these three groups. However, the term also implied to people born free who were primarily of Black African descent with little mixture. They were a distinct group of free people of color in the French colonies, including Louisiana, and in settlements on Caribbean islands, such as St. Dominique or Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Africans, Bozeles, Europeans, Ladinos, and Native American, Indians, or Israelites, mixed to create a particular type. They were all basically descendant of, or the free people of color were descendants of these three groups. So they usually had Native American, European, and so-called African heritage, free people of color. For further historical background on the black elite, free Negro, and free people of color. When enslaved Africans were brought to the Americas in the 17th and 18th century, they began to be mixed race children of African and European descent in the Americas. The free black community in the U.S. had therefore increased considerably by 1800. And although most of them were very poor, some were able to own farmland or to learn mechanical or artistic trades. Mixed race is called mestizo in Latin America. The Ladinos were the first so-called African Americans or Black Americans, yet they were classified as culturally Latino, but yet they are Black Americans. For example, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. and Lois Harris has or have Spanish or Latino features, yet they are black Americans. Charles R. Drew and this Creole woman are definitely more examples of black Americans or African Americans with Latino phenotypes. Black American, the Latino type. Black American, the Latino type. In the Dark Ages and Middle Ages in England, this phenotype or facial type would be called a man or woman with a Spanish complexion. More black Americans who will be classified as having Latino features. A Marie Laveau Creole man. These are classical Latino types found among black Americans and other ethnic types 
in the Caribbean, like in Haiti. Black Americans, Creole, they are classified as having Latino phenotype, or facial features. And to understand the definition of the term Ladino, if we look in the book, The Rise of the Transatlantic Slave Trade in Western Africa from 1300 to 1589 by author Toby Green, if we look in a glossary, the definition or meaning of the word Ladino would be non-Iberian or Spanish or Portuguese native, non-Iberian or non-Iberians, for example, Jews, slaves, who speak Spanish, Ladinos or Jews who speak Spanish. So let's briefly look into the definition of the word or words Ladino and Mestizo. The words Mestizo and Ladino. The World Book Dictionary Facts speak for themselves. So let, let's take a look at the word Ladino. Ladino In Spanish America A mestizo B. A mestizo or other native who adopts Western ways of living. 2. Also, Ladino. Definition 4. A Spanish dialect with Hebrew elements. Descendants of Spanish and Portuguese Jews. Judeo-Spanish. Spanish, Ladino. Literally, Latin. Latin. Latinus, Latin. World Book Dictionary, Ladino, Mestizos, are the same ethnic type. Portuguese, Spanish, Jews. Webster's New World Dictionary, 2nd edition. Ladino, Spanish, for wise, cunning, learned. Literally, Latin. Latinus, a Spanish dialect with some elements of Hebrew spoken by Sephardic Jews in Turkey and other Mediterranean countries like Spain and Portugal. Spanish America, a person of mixed ancestry. Ladinos, wise, cunning, learned, a Latin. Ladinos were known as Latinized or Hispanized Blacks. Ladino, non-Iberians, or for example, Jews, slaves, who spoke or who speak Spanish. Webster's New Universal Unabridged Dictionary, Ladino, Judeo-Spanish, Jusimo. Sephardic Jews, Old Spanish, and written in the Hebrew script. In Spanish America, a Ladino is called a Mestizo. Ladinos are Sephardic Jews, but they're also known as Mestizos. A Mestizo man. A mestiza, baby, and a mestiza, woman. These are caster or lineage paintings. In North America, 
the United States of America. A mestizo and mestiza was called a free person of color. A mestiza woman from Mexico, Latin America, a mestiza woman. A mestiza, a black American woman of this type would be called a Ladino, a Creole, or a free person of color. Macizo, any one of mixed blood in Mexico and the Western United States. A person of Spanish and Indian blood, also called Ladino. The Ladinos, or the Jews, or the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi married and to the Aborigines or indigenous North American Indians. Jews married into the tribes of Israel, the Indians. Mesiso, anyone of mixed blood in Mexico and the Western United States, a person of Spanish and Indian blood, also called Ladino. Webster New World Dictionary, 2nd edition. Mestizo, of mixed race, co-mingled in the Western United States and in Latin America or Latin American countries, the offspring of a Spaniard or Portuguese, Black Ladino, and an American Indian. Black Ladinos could be of Portuguese or of Spanish descent. They could be found in the countries of or among the descendants of Mexicans, Latin Americans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans, Mestizos, paternally of Negroid, Ladino or Bozeles, a Mestiza father's paternal line could go back to Negroes or Ladinos or Bazelis or the paternal line could go back to indigenous Indian descent such as Aztecas. So Mestizas paternally or the father's lineage could be either Negroes or of Indian descent. Ladin to the right, we have a picture of a mestiza. To the left, we have a picture of a castizo. Mestizas and mestizos are the parents of the castizos. The castizo man to the left. Castizos are the children of black Ladinos and indigenous Indians. A castizo man from Latin America. A castizo is a person of color because his parents were black Ladinos and indigenous Indians. King Charles I, or the first of England, both men, the Castizo man and Charles I, or Charles I of England, were people of color. A description of King Charles I of England, a black man on a black horse. This description 
could be found in a nursery rhyme. As I was going by Charing Cross, and there's an image or picture of Charing Cross with a statue of Charles the First. It's a nursery rhyme published in the 1840s. Lyrics. The modern versions include As I was going by Charing Cross, I saw a black man upon a black horse. They told me it was King Charles the First. Oh dear, my heart was ready to burst. <laughs>